Hey friends, your old pal Bo here, the old man on YouTube with the face for radio and a voice for print. Coming at you again uh, with another more bad news, I guess, from the blogosphere. Bad news from the world of, of tabletop role-playing games. Um, don't know if you've known this, but uh, I guess um, at Gen Con, um, Steve Jackson Games put out their Gen Con edition pin, which was their Illuminati uh, I. Uh, they're all seeing I with a rainbow background. I can't say I'm surprised. I don't know if they're just virtue signaling. This is probably their third strike in that regard. Uh, not too long ago, they came out really in favor of the anti, anti Roe versus Wade abortion decision. Um, and then, so they came out really in strong favor of abortion rights. And then before that, they came out with, they were, um, Part of that whole October surprise, pro Hillary Clinton uh, role playing game um, memo a few years back, if you remember that. And I feel like I've got to make a video to sort of distance myself from um, Steve Jackson games, since uh, you know I am a, a, a vocal and outspoken uh, fan of uh, of third and fourth edition GURPS. For various reasons, particularly its ability to um, have skills, skills, and skills not related to combat. You know, a lot of uh, role-playing games have become so combat-heavy. Uh, you know, I, I kick down the door, I kill the monster, I take the loot, I go to the next one, and that's not really the kind of games that I run. If you've run my games or we talk about my games, you know, I tend to be heavier on the role-playing side of things. Um, and I've, I've managed to avoid having to make a video like this for a while. I feel like I've really got to distance myself from, uh, Steve Jackson games, uh, SJG, the uh, whole, this whole Austin. I mean, for one thing, it's an Austin. So I mean, can I really be surprised? Um, not to sound like a, too much of a shit Lord, but, uh, I feel I feel gut punched with the whole thing. Plus this whole Allison Page thing, you know she's um, evidently quite the um, radical left winger. And I I my whole goal uh, as a role playing gamer is that you don't know my personal politics, you know, in my videos or don't know my personal politics in my games. I'm really the kind of the um, the OSR type. You know, shut up and play. You know, there's no room for real life politics. There's no room for real life um, agendas at my gaming table. I just want to sit down. I want to play a game. I want to roll some dice. I want to forget about real life for a couple hours. Um, and that really includes when I'm sitting at this table, when I'm painting, when I'm building models, um, whether I'm building, kit bashing, basing. I, I don't want to talk about re the real world. I'm really a proponent of the um, RP gate, you know. Uh, I want to have a naturally progressing game. I want to have a naturally evolving game. I want to have a game that's free of, of any modern intrusions in terms of politics, but uh, eventually this might come and bite me. Uh, as of now, I'm, I'm not buying any new GURPS. I'm not buying anything direct from Warhouse 23 or S, um, SJ Games. Um, I've been concentrating on collecting more of the third edition Traveler stuff because that's really my jam. That's really where we, what we're playing right now. I'm using a lot of the, the uh, Traveler supplements, um, some of the world building and ship building supplements. Uh, in my Friday night game, in our Friday night game, because uh, I'm just, I'm not having it. It hurts my soul. Again, I'm, I just want to sit down and have a natural, um, naturally developing, you know, a naturally inclusive uh, RPG experience. And the more I want that, the more the Twitterati, the more the YouTube, um, Cognoscenti, I don't know, the more influence that they have and 
Um, you know, this is part of gatekeeping, right? Um, the minute you let people who don't really care about the game, the minute you let people that don't really care about having fun, that, that push an agenda first, the minute you let them at your table, the minute you give them a little authority, they will um, destroy that thing that you like. Whatever it is, they will destroy it. And then when they are done, they'll move on to the next thing, right? They did it with Star Wars. They, they did it with um, Warhammer. They're doing it with Battletech now. They're, they're, you know, they're moving their way in. Uh, Doctor Who, any, any non-political, any wholesome um, IP, whatever that IP is, whatever you like, if you let these people in, they will destroy it. And then when they've done destroyed it, when it's a smoldering husk, they'll move on. So, like, you know, they're moving into GURPS. By that time, you know, let's, again, if you care about it, gatekeep, gatekeep, gatekeep. If you care about it, do your best to, um, to make it what you like. I was talking to my friend, That Darn Cat, about this this morning, and he said that the best thing we could do is to um, run problematic and red flaggy campaigns um, in our in, in our GURPS at our table regardless of what game we're running it doesn't have to be GURPS um, I, I like again I like GURPS because it has a lot of uh, it focuses on a lot of non-combat stuff right there's a lot of focus on on skills and there's a lot of focus on um, I'm really on role playing when it gets down to it regardless of what other people other comments other people have made uh, people that don't know what the hell they're talking about should mind their own business. But anyway, I'm having a good time. Um, yeah. So, you know, GURPS is a game that's been around been around a long time, and I'm sure that there are people out there who, like me, are only interested in rolling dice, having fun. Um, I've built up quite a collection of third and fourth edition books over the last um, um, two years, maybe, because um, this is the kind of game that I want to play. And I, I suppose I could play any game, but I don't think it has the ability to play it um, fluffy or crunchy. It doesn't have the the capacity to to uh, be as modifiable as personalizable, and that's really what I want. I want the ability to um, crack open a book, and if I want magic, I've got eight different kinds of magic from which to pick. If I want to have psionics, I've got four or five different kinds of psionics from which to pick, and uh, I can make it easy enough to run that it becomes almost seamless, or I can make it super crunchy. And we can stop and do lots of dice rolls, but I really need the ability to run skills that are not um, combat oriented, right? Your typical role playing game is all about fighting, it's all about monsters. And I'm really not about that right now, you know? I want to have, and I got to have rules for those things because let's face it, a game without rules, yeah, I played that when I was a kid. It's called make believe. Right? I'm not here to play make-believe. I'm here to play a game, and a game's got to have rules, and conflicts have to be resolved in some way. And typically, that conflict is resolved by a roll of the dice. Right? I want to do something. You want to do something different. NPC wants to do something. We have to decide what, how that happened. So having a die roll with the modifiers for difficulty make sense. Okay. That's what we're talking about. So what's going to happen with me, my, my relationship with Steve Jackson Games, my relationship um, with GURPS? I'm going to keep buying third edition books, mostly third edition books on um, eBay. I've got, I think, all of the fourth edition books that I want. 
uh, fourth edition is not nearly as deep or as broad as third edition was. Third edition was kind of that heyday of um, the the campaign and setting books that everybody wanted. You know, it's when they did GURPS Conan and GURPS Traveler. Um, I'll continue to buy those when the price is right. I'm not going to uh, pay any excessive prices for them. But when I can get them for 20, 25 bucks a piece for good shape, I will. And uh, I will write my name on the inside cover and I will put them up on my shelf and I will use them as needed to um, keep my game going. You know, that's one of the whole reasons that I got back into gaming. I wanted to have some freedom um, to both run the game I wanted to run, play the game that I wanted to play, and not have to worry about the influence of, of, of things like uh, like Wizards of the Coast or uh, Games Workshop, right? Again, I'm a big proponent of you know your hobby, your way. Uh, it's my game. Uh, I paid the money for it, and I'm going to run it basically the way I want. If you like it, you'll play with me. If you don't, you'll play with somebody else, right? This is the whole libertarian philosophy this is the, this is a contract i offer something you offer something we agree upon these terms and conditions and then we play a game but uh, if if allison page and steve jackson are going to insist that i play the games their way or run the games their way then my our options are um, one find a different game or two ignore them and continue to do what you want, when you want, with whom you want, in a manner that is pleasing uh, to you, right? And that's kind of where I am right now. Again, I do feel, I do feel kind of gut punched over this whole rainbow thing. Um, I didn't like it when Bud Light did it, but I don't drink beer anyway, so I found that less. Um, Less, less influencing, less troubling. So, okay, I don't care if they put out a rainbow something. I'm just not going to buy their new products. I'll stick to their old stuff. What I really want to do is I want to make sure they put it to my viewers that um, I am in no, no way endorse, support, or not sponsored by Steve Jackson Games. They don't pay me. They don't, uh, they don't do anything. Uh, for me, except provide a product that I have been fairly satisfied with. If there was a product that did meet all of my needs in a better way, I would give it a shot. But as of right now, it's uh, it's a game and game system that I could use to run everything from uh, from low tech to high tech, fantasy, horror, sci-fi. I could run Cthulhu Monsters. I could run uh, Buck Rogers style space game. I could run a D&D style fantasy game. Uh, something Tolkien-esque. I could run world. I could run Weird World War II. Uh, and there are actually source books for most of these things, both licensed IP and. Um, you know, more independent, more generic stuff. So it's a game that, that uh, I think it runs really well once you get your characters made and everything done. It's uh, So I don't feel any need to um, abandon, abandon what I have now. I do feel a great need to not buy any 5th edition books or any new 4th edition books. Um, from Steve Jackson Games or from Warehouse 23 or Amazon. Um, but I can't tell you what to do, right? First rule of hobbying is have fun. The second rule of hobbying is your hobby, your way. So I'm telling you, I'm telling you what I'm doing so that hopefully I won't catch any, I don't want any of that crap that's going to hit them to splatter off and hit me too. Right. Um, 
I'm just here to roll dice and have fun and not get involved in anybody's crappy, crappy politics. So, still painting capes. Um, I took a minute from painting capes to finish basing the uh, metal um, Stargrave minis that I started on. I just want to take a break so I can start painting them too. Uh, I do some pretty simple basing. I just uh, lay down a really thin coat of Mod Podge. Use PVA. Mod Podge is, is basically PVA, but you can get it in tubs. And then I've got a really crappy Walmart. I think this was actually from Hobby Lobby. Just a cheap Hobby Lobby brush. I paint down a thin layer of Mod Podge. And then I got some kitty litter. And I'll sprinkle some kitty litter over that. And then I'll use some really fine um, hobby sand to fill in all the cracks. I don't know if I showed you guys this before, I might have. And then, so when you're done, this is uh, Taddeus, the uh, Minostorm Priest from Blackstone Fortress. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Good job. Whoop. So, and then I will... Prime the whole thing black, Xenothal, and Slap Chop. And then I think I'll probably do him Maroon too. I've just been trying to collect all of the Ministorum Inquisitorial figures I could find. Uh, especially if I can find them on eBay at a decent price. That one is actually fairly cheap by Games Workshop standards. I guess he might not have any good rules in the in the tenth edition. Or and you know I uh, wish that Blackstone Fortress would get a re-release. Actually, that's a, a game I would not mind. It's got some really cool minis. And every time I, I get a chance and I can find them, especially the... Um, again, the um, Inquisition guys. I kind of like the, uh, the idea of running a sci-fi Inquisition. It'd be kind of fun if my... Uh, players in my Friday GURPS game ran into a Space Inquisition. Like something out of uh, like Doctor Who or uh, Star Trek the original series, right? You know, land on a planet, get captured by the Inquisition, get broken out by the, uh, you know, by the underground, right before you get burned at the stake, fight your way out with the underground, uh, put the, uh, the worthy what do you call it? The the rightful put the rightful prince back on a princess. Put the rightful princess back on the throne. Get back in your spaceship and fly off to another adventure. See, that's the kind of pulp, um, non political, non uh, you know, non woke. I guess game that I really want to play. I think that if you tried to do that now, though, you you probably get. Um, I get canceled because it's red flaggy and problematic and uh, represents the uh, heteronormative, cisgendered, uh, shitlord patriarchy. Something like that. Anyway. Um, and I'm like, dude, I just want to roll dice. Let's get back up. So, uh, if you like what you've seen, please. Uh, Subscribe, comment, uh, knowing that I'm getting any kind of attention at all, good or bad, uh, gives me more, more motivation to go on and make videos like this. I uh, am looking at cameras so I can do some more painting streams in the near future. I don't really want to be Joe the streamer. I'd rather make these kinds of short form videos. Anyway, Let's see, that's kind of what they look like. Whoop. Stupid. When they're done. Yeah. And uh, if you watched my last, I think it was on Shadow Stream Saturday, when I uh, floral wired all the metal minis, I just decided to use 25 millimeter bases for these. They're about the same size as the, um, the smaller, older GW metals. And I've got a couple over here. And on the tabletop, the, the height doesn't really make a huge difference for RPGs. It makes a bigger difference on the tabletop if you're playing a tabletop game. I do wish the Sisters of Battle were a little bit smaller. 
Um, but on the other hand, as the scale creep went up, that made them almost the same size as the um, old style Space Marines. I think I was showing this earlier. Compared to the new models, the uh, old Space Marines almost look like a man in power armor. Just really what I want anyway, you know. Not interested in genetically engineered super soldiers. I'm more interested in pharmacologically enhanced super soldiers. All right, so that's enough for me for now. Um, yeah, if you like what I do, uh, leave a comment. If you don't, leave a comment anyway because it really helps the algorithm. And uh, I will catch you on the flip later in the week. Uh, I sh might be on uh, Gatekeepers for a little while tonight. And uh, I'll be available later in the week too. All right. If you need to get a hold of me, it's uh, Bow Paints Minis, all one word at gmail.com. All right. A bit of peace.